One of the intriguing things about marketing U.S. beef worldwide is that each country has different cuisines, different cuts they prefer, and different technical challenges that must be overcome to be competitive in that marketplace. With me now to talk about some of those technical challenges, Paul Clayton. He's the Senior Vice President of Export Services for the United States Meat Export Federation. Paul, tell folks a little bit about the uh, Technical Services Department and some of the challenges you work through for the U.S. beef industry. Thanks, Kevin. Well, we have several challenges that we have to work through on a daily basis. And myself and my staff, uh, probably one of the primary things that we do is, is look at the uh, import requirements that a country may have. And from there, we'll, we'll share those with the, uh, the rest of the industry. And we'll try to determine if that's going to be a challenge or not. And then uh, that may end up, once we move that to USDA and, and USTR, will, will they have to negotiate something? Okay. That isn't always the case. That may change from, or that may be different from uh, country to country. Uh, the next thing that would happen then is it, it will get it in a form that we can give it to the exporters so that they can start using that. Uh, sometimes that may include some production things that cattlemen may have, have to do. But in most cases it's usually with the exporters. USDA uh, uh, Food Safety Inspection Service will put that out into what we call the export library which is the list of all of these requirements. Sometimes those can be a little bit hard to understand, so we'll, we'll do some things to help the, uh, the exporters understand what that is. Our website even has some guidance documents that kind of explains how they might use some of those things. But ultimately, it, it uh, just helps those uh, individuals understand what they need to do. Some of the challenges that, that uh, may happen, you know, for instance, in the, this most recent um, situation we had on the West Coast with the, the ports uh, not being totally open, uh, we had to ask USDA if there would be some modifications maybe in some of the documentation so that products could flow through a little bit easier. And, and then they worked with the foreign governments to uh, see if they were okay with that. So it, it's a very dynamic and changing situation almost on a daily basis. So help me understand how your team works with and collaborates with NCBA on some of these issues. Well, with quite a bit of, uh, quite a few things we do, we're obviously, we are members of the Beef Innovations Group. So we, we work and try to find products that will work in the, uh, um, marketplace, whether it be here or overseas, but obviously if we make a change with some product here in the U.S., that may make a, an advantage for us or a product that we can use uh, in the foreign market. So we collaborate a lot of those things. We're also members of BISCO, so being food safety being such an important part of the industry, we make sure that that is something that we tell the, the foreign markets about. But there's a lot of other programs and things that, are, that the NCBA does that we capture and, and, use, and use that information. A lot of that may be on the website. But uh, we also trade back and forth. I just recently was on the Cattlemen's College and kind of explained the use of variety meats and how those are used in, in the various markets. Uh, tell folks a little bit about um, uh, why you think U.S. Meat Export Federation is so important. What's one thing you would want folks to know about USMEF? Well, one of the things I think that uh, cattlemen would like to, to understand is that just how much value the foreign markets are. And, and it isn't like we sell full carcasses in the foreign markets. It's incremental. We yeah. sell pieces. And one of the key things is, is that uh, we try to add value to those pieces. Mm -hmm. One of the biggest things are variety meats and offalls. Uh, those are items that are not going to be consumed in the United States. So we're able to find a home from them that may have more value. For example, a liver here in the United States might be worth 20 cents a pound. But even though we take it to, to maybe a developing country such as Egypt, it's worth 60 cents a pound. Mm -hmm. Or maybe even more uh, uh, classical items that aren't necessarily in, in high demand here, but we can create demand for them in a foreign market. Things like short ribs and short plates, uh, golly, some of their values may up be in the five and six dollar things. So ultimately we might create about $300 in value per head just in the international markets alone. And that's a historic value you're adding to all of our bottom lines. We appreciate it. Yep. Don't forget to learn more about the work of the U.S. Meat Export Federation. You should check out their website. That's USMEF.org. And to see video replays of our stories, just visit our website at cattlemantocattlemen.org.